What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. The best job in the world, getting sponsored to travel all around it. Am I right? If you agree, be sure to hit that like button down below and without further ado, let's dive in. So you see people breaking records and traveling around the world, but how do they do it? Well, let me backtrack on how I decided on how sponsorship would be the most lucrative way to go about obtaining funding for this expedition around the world that I did. P.S. These videos are made with the purpose of educating those who watch them who want to learn. So while this video could be three minutes long and just listing a bunch of bullet points, I assume that since you're here, you also might want to learn how to do so so as to maximize your chances of securing funding for your travels. Please do not skip through. The stories and the points that I'm making are very important and relevant and if you're serious about obtaining funding for your travels around the world listening to all the points in this video will only further and help you in doing so in 2014 i was checking the news one day and i remember it was the front page of cnn and this man just like caught my eye i mean he was really beautiful really intriguing and it's not really often that you see such a beautiful like worldly intriguing young man out there on the front page of the headlines this man's name was eric hill and at the time he had been a few episodes episodes into The Bachelor, which I'd never seen The Bachelor before. Um, to this day, I've never really seen it, but I decided to make it a point to see it just to see this guy who was in it. He was beautiful, exhilarating, intelligent, interesting, and aiming to become the fastest person to travel every country in the world with an aim to break previous man's record of three years and three months. That was also the man whose record I ended up breaking. Tragically, when Eric was going after the record, he took a break and apparently he did The Bachelor for a couple episodes, which I could not honestly relate to kind of doing naked and afraid and like taking a break from my travels during my expedition to come home and secure more visas and just kind of rehabilitate my mind and repurpose my plan around the world. I believe he was nearly halfway through his odyssey around the world at around 50 countries or so when he was in Utah doing some paragliding. Something went wrong and he ended up suffering fatal injuries as a result of a paragliding accident. He was really young in his early 30s and with a purpose of really changing the world that we live in uh, through his odyssey of being the fastest person to travel every country in the world. And since his death, I think his family started to live like Eric so others can kind of follow in his footsteps. He certainly inspired me and my decision to pursue that specific Guinness World Record. His family actually reached out to me after they heard me speaking about him in a couple news interviews and how he inspired me. And they were just really grateful that I mentioned his name and I was able to become inspired by his odyssey. But not even knowing him at the time, I was incredibly distraught. Distraught over a man I didn't even no. And I'll be honest, as I'm filming this video right now, Tuesday, January 8th, 2020, and just two days ago, Kobe Bryant and his daughter, along with seven other passengers who all had families, husbands and wives and children, perished in a helicopter accident just down the road from me, actually, in Calabasas. And that really hit me really hard. And even right now, as I'm doing this video, it still has hit me. It hasn't really sunk in. I obviously never knew anyone in that helicopter personally. I never knew Kobe Bryant but for some reason it just really like devastated me and hundreds of thousands of people around the world just because of the impact that Kobe and his daughter and even the people in that plane were able to make on people around the world and in their local communities. So even if you don't really necessarily know a person, it's very easy to become inspired by that person and really distraught when they suddenly pass away. So I was distraught over this man that I didn't even know. He was traveling the world and he was traveling for a purpose and a mission and a vision to enhance the world we live in for his career. When I saw that and the fact that he had sponsors to support him on his passion-driven mission around the world to like break the Guinness World Record, I knew that I had a way of making my dream of traveling every country in the world come true. I knew that I wanted to travel every country in the world and I knew I wanted to do so for a purpose of enhancing the world we live in, but I wasn't quite sure how to make that happen and how to financially be able to afford it. And it wasn't that easy at first glance to just kind of like figure this out, even through learning Eric's story. I knew that aside from saving my own money and applying to credit cards to use the points and that sort of thing, I could also potentially secure sponsorship to travel every country in the world. But how? You know, people like Michael Phelps and Lindsey Vaughn, they were securing sponsorships, but the companies providing them sponsorship cash, they had incentives to want to give them money. And that reasoning is, of course, that that company's product or brand can be seen in front of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people all around the world. And that's through these high-profile athletes or figures or celebrities.
celebrities like Michael Phelps or Lindsey Vonn or Serena Williams and that sort of thing. But I did not have that sort of audience or exposure. So I had to think of alternative ways. I then looked outside the sport world to people like Randall Fiennes and Laura Decker. People can get very down in the mouth and think it's going to be very dangerous or impossible to carry on. And, you know, it's better to accept things, expect the worst and not get either too excited when it doesn't happen or too excited when things are going well. I try very hard not to be optimistic or pessimistic, but try and find what realism is to be realistic. And that's sometimes quite difficult. And so I would err on the side of pessimism and even to Angelina Jolie and Warren Buffett. How did these people get financial support to explore and help the world that we live in? And what did they have to do to get there? We all know that Angelina and Buffett had a substantial salary to support their humanitarian goals. So let's move past that for now. Randall Fiennes was and is still considered the greatest living explorer. And he had to get his Guinness World Record breaking ventures funded as well. Laura Decker was also the youngest person to sail across the world. She did so at 14 and she also did so alone. I found her personally really inspiring. I've researched these people, watched their documentaries and films, and even went so far as to study each brand that sponsored their trip, whether for financial sponsorship or trade. And why? Why did these companies decide to sponsor them? So then I had to look at the sort of decks and proposals that they offered to these companies. What incentives did they have to offer that was attractive to these companies wanting to show their product or their service in front of a lot of people? I then looked to founders of successful nonprofits and how they came to be. What what sort of individuals did they support and why? I also looked into the kinds of people that were reaching out for financial sponsorship, but weren't necessarily successful in securing that sponsorship. And why was that? Saving you the past six years that it's fully taken me to figure this all out. I'll try to get to the point with all of this. What each one of these individuals had, whether in sport, philanthropy, or exploration, was that they were attempting to achieve something that no other person in history had done. That, or they were looking to make a significant positive impact on our world in some way. Uh, the, the amount of people who have DM'd me or emailed me saying they want to or intend on breaking my Guinness World Record and then further emailing me asking how exactly I secured sponsorships so that they can do so themselves is astounding. Guys, I get a lot of these emails and the chances of someone being able to secure sponsorship for breaking a record that's already been broken in a substantial way is near to impossible. And let me just break this down for you. If you look at the greatest record holders who actually set the record in the first place. And then you look at the first person to break that record that was already set. That's all that people really, unfortunately, care to pay attention to. And I'm just going to be completely blunt and honest here. And I've gone after records that had been set and broken, and then I was looking to break that record. And this is just honestly being real with you guys, like that was not successful because it had already been set, then broken, then I'm like trying to break that again. If the record that you're attempting to break has been broken at least once before and set before that, it's just not worth your time. If, however, you're looking to break a record that someone has already set or set a record yourself, then that tends to be newsworthy. And it's worth noting that while, yes, my Guinness World Record is broken, the people who have broken my record or the person, or I'm not even sure, like no one really hears about. Because listen, the record was set at three years and three months from this guy that initially set the record. I broke his record. All these people who are like trying to break my record or broken my record, it's like you, you haven't heard about them in the news. And this this is why. This is why I'm explaining this to you guys. The reason being is, and it's been done too many times before. At that point, people can say, well, it can be done by anyone if it's been done twice, you know. The space of record breaking becomes extremely saturated unless that record is broken in like an exponential amount of time. The previous guy who set the record that I broke, I broke his record in half. Now, if someone were to break my record and travel to every single country in the world in 50 days, like that is extremely newsworthy. But even so, since it's being done a third time, people don't really see it as being like achieving the impossible sort of thing. And just to be clear, I'm not saying any of this out of envy. Trust me, it was cool that I broke the records, but what was most important to me was becoming the first woman on record to travel alone to every country in the world, as well as the philanthropic aspect of my mission around the world. That came number one. In fact, I encourage people to go after travel records, but it's also worth noting that records are meant to be broken here. So if you do set a record and it's broken, don't be discouraged that someone broke it. It's just what it's meant to be. And the whole point of obtaining sponsorship, like this was a 
huge point that I'm trying to make is that you have to set yourself apart from other people. So if your goal is to just simply break a record and it doesn't end up being newsworthy in any sort, you have to have a few things to fall back on, whether it be being the first at something or humanitarian or doing something completely different or being something completely different than anyone else to make you stand out and for companies who want to sponsor you. And you know, I would never tell someone that breaking a record for the third time will get them anywhere. I just want to be completely honest and I want to genuinely help people get to where they want to be in their travel career and obtaining sponsorship and that sort of thing. So I want to be completely honest here. To give you another example, we look at the first person to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong. We then look to the second person to walk on the moon, that being Edwin Aldrin. Both got a ton of press and fame. Suddenly when Charles Pete Conrad comes into the picture, undeservingly, though he achieved something great like the first two, he's got much less press and suddenly just kind of only comes up in research when working on an article or project of sorts. It's a shame. This is like shameful, but it's the way society works and how they get entertained and inspired. Same goes for anything else in life. Okay, so we've determined that in order to stand out to companies for sponsorship in the travel space, it's important to do something noteworthy, something that hasn't been done before or something that's only been done once before. If you have an actionable plan for this, then you're set. However, with currently near to 8 billion people on our planet in 2020, it's important to stand out for something even more if possible. And that requires including including some sort of humanitarian effort into your goal. Suddenly, you make yourself appealing to not only brands like Red Bull, who seek to support people challenging human limits, but also to companies like Nat Geo, who seek to not only support explorers and such, but those who are really changing the world from a biodiversity or humanity standpoint. And that's just an example. Make yourself as strong a candidate as you can to secure sponsorship. Find something the world is lacking in regards to philanthropy and humanitarianism, and include that in your mission, in your vision, in your blueprint. Personally, I've always been passionate about the environment and sustainability, and I always wanted to show the world the good that exists in it, instead of just all the bad and scary stuff. So I decided to promote responsible tourism and peace through tourism. While I likely wouldn't attract Nat Geo for my humanitarian efforts, though I will say that I tried, I was able to secure the support of nature-driven and peace-driven nonprofit organizations. Nearly every single major company in the world has a CSR mission, or Corporate Social Response responsibility mission that they need to follow as a business and incorporate into it. And yours will likely fit into one of the hundreds of thousands of businesses out there looking to support individuals or even small companies for sponsorship. If you're watching this, likely you or someone you know is looking to travel the world on a sponsored trip. If you are that person or you're looking to learn for that person, please do your homework before watching part two of this series. Number one, find that one thing that will set you apart from the rest. Are you going to be that first person to touch the bottom? of the deepest ocean without oxygen? Mm, highly doubtful, but had to throw it in there somewhere. Are you going to be the first person to break that two-hour marathon time? Are you going to provide clean water resources to all of Central Africa for eternity? Maybe you have a disability and you want to promote that and kind of show people the other side of your disability in some way through travel. Whatever it is, find that unique draw for some record that you can set or break that is captivating. But don't discuss it with anyone. Keep this idea to yourself and only share it with a few select people who you trust, like your parents or your sibling or your spouse. People steal other people's ideas all the time. I've been victim to that in the past, so don't share yours in these early stages. Yes, it's important to get feedback, but if you're really strong on what you're going to do, and if you do share it with your close family members and they share a little bit of input, then you should be good to go. Uh, I just really think it's important to kind of keep this to yourself in the early stages. Number two, find that humanitarian thing that you're passionate about. What is it? Check the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 of them to choose from, and pick one that really draws in your focus. Don't really go by what most people are concerned about, like quality and climate change, of course those are really important matters, but you really want to go with a cause that you are actually passionate about, that you are driven about. Companies will see through to the truth of what you feel and what you're promoting. The more passionate about it that you are, the better. Be sure to like this video if you want to see part two of getting sponsored to travel the world, and otherwise subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when it does post. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.